Hello Yay. guys! Welcome Hi. to CCXP! How are you guys doing? Hello Priyanka! Hi Jessica! Hey Yaya! Hi! Hi! Oh, Alright man, yourself? So bad man! Hello, Hello. Keanu! Hey. Jada, Jada aqui também! Oh, Angela, oh how are you? Oh my gosh, I love you, Jonathan. Brazil! Oh my god, we love you back! Thank you, what a pleasure! Let's start with a quick warm question. When did you first watch The Matrix and how was it for you? Priyanka, you can go first. I remember watching it in the movie theater, obviously, and I remember going with friends. But more than that, what I remember is remembering the effect The Matrix had and dressing like that all the time and just repeating you know things about the matrix and it just changed pop culture for me i i, I remember it changed watching movies it made movies different for me so i remember renting the matrix vhs at blockbuster with my friends and taking it home and seeing it with them and being incredibly thrilled and confused and excited <laughs> and uh, blown away. I remember two things. Mm. The fashion, like the black, sleek, sort of this Rick Owens aesthetic, you know, that we mm -hmm. see, uh, see today. And then I remember the slow motion, like dodging bullets in slow motion. And doing that, that was, all the time. And of course, like, and everybody what? trying to move in slow motion. And that was <laughs> just epic. And that's one simple moment, but just the, the, the many ideas that that one action set piece inspired across across film, you know, for the next two decades, it was just, you know, undeniable. Uh, I, I knew that it was something iconic in the, you know, the result show. It just basically made me question everything. And I think that's where my activism was born. It was born through the idea of questioning everything, of not accepting the system just because that's how it is. And it lit this fire in me of wanting to go out and wake up, take the red pill, and really change the world. I didn't see it in cinemas. I, I was too young, I think. But oh, when I, boo, show <laughs> off. <laughs> but when I watched it, I was still too young, and it scarred me. I was really afraid of my mouth getting oh, sewn up. Right. And I was really afraid of things oh. entering my belly button. I don't think the idea of something going into my belly button had ever occurred to me until, right. I, until I watched Matrix. Right. It was like, no, I, I knew that that was safe because it's all tied up, so nothing can get in there. But oh. when that got inside, oh. I was like, oh. Oh, that's, that's a, an entry that's hole? A new, right, that's a new. <laughs> That's an orifice I didn't know existed. That's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> How does it feel to be back in the Matrix after all these years? Was it a matter of adjusting yourself to reprise the roles or did you feel that your characters had similar growth experience uh, during that time? Um, well, I was completely thrilled when I got the call to be a part of the, the movie and um, I would definitely say that my character has grown considerably. She's new in a certain way. It'll be a, a, a Niobe that's different than what you've seen before. I really enjoyed playing her. Um, uh, it, was, it was actually very um, interesting uh, because of how she's matured. You know, it's a beautiful script and story by Lana Wachowski. And uh, it was a real pleasure to play Neo Thomas Anderson again. Um, and after all these years, a very unique experience for us, right? Like to be able to reprise a role after so much time and to have the changes and how have they changed? How haven't they changed? Yeah, it was a wonderful experience and hopefully people will enjoy the film. Every actor dreams about working with the directors who made the class kiss of their generation. What were your first thoughts when you got the part to be in a Matrix movie directed by Lana Wachowski? Um, disbelief, shock, uh, excitement. I m met her at my audition and her wife, Karen, and their dog, uh, and their friend and producer, Amy, they were all at my audition and it felt like a we were talking artist to artist. I got very excited to be a part of the Matrix and a part of that world of hers, but I was also at the same time very excited to work with this person who makes, happens to make 
um, art that is giant commercial sci-fi movies, but to me, she's an artist first. So I was, I was so excited to get in the room and create with her. I was very excited. I actually have it, it exists somewhere, the, the, uh, a recording of the phone call. I recorded like on my laptop, the phone call when she called me Aww. and invited me to, to, uh, to be a part of The Matrix. Um, I have been trying to line up my career with just following the tastemakers. And so when I got this job, uh, it was it was it was right in line, and it and it it was you know I was over the moon uh, excited because it was a chance to be a part of something cool, but then to learn, you know, Lana was really, she was really all about the collaborative experience. You know, it was almost as if the movie was secondary. She just wanted to be able to be a teacher and to have a great experience on set, and that was something that I was excited to excited to go and be a part of. Yeah, she's a visionary. And to be included in her vision is a place where you can do your best work. Yeah. You know? It's her enthusiasm and um, um, just her love, her passion. Well, she's always been passionate about yeah. this project. It was her why. Yeah, it was the why. Why, why she was doing it. Yeah. My craziest dreams came true when I got to audition in front of Lana Wachowski and James McTeague for Sense8. It was the director for Viva Vendetta and the director of the Matrix trilogies were just sitting right there in front of me. I never thought I would get the role for Sense8 and having gotten it and having become a part of this family and having had the opportunity to create and to be a brush in this like beautiful painting was a pinch me moment and just heart, just heartwarming and life changing. I was outside of 7-Eleven trying to wait for my Uber. <laughs> oh wow. And he'd circled me three times. And so I get a phone call from an unrecognized number and I pick up and I just, I, I'm straight in there like, dude, I'm outside the 7-Eleven. You keep, you stop circling. <laughs> and then there was just a long pause. And then Lana Wachowski's voice like, this is Lana Wachowski. <laughs> Who do you think this is? <laughs> Uh, but I, w I wish I'd recorded it. I was in the room with Lana when she told me. Um, I was at a meeting and um, um, she and James were sitting together and we were talking about the movie and we were talking about, you know, um, this part for her, the role, that, uh, the part that I'm playing. She said it was very special to her because it, um, you know, originated in the first movie and is, is just a very important part for her. <clears throat> and we talked about how much being a part of the legacy of um, this movie for me, like Yaya, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to look for, to do work with amazing filmmakers and to be part of, you know, legacy work. And um, this was that, and it checked that box for me in a really big way. After our conversation, she brought a freshly printed script with my name on oh, it wow. Wow. and gave it to me and said, well, you're in the movie. You know, there's the handful of people in the world, uh, especially a handful of directors and artists that have that special, first of all, the brain uh, capacity and the artistry at the same time. And she's, she is one of the most extraordinary people working today and it was so, um, for as much sort of pressure as there is going back to this world of the Matrix, I think for everyone, and you know, the, you want to deliver something great. Um, there's this level as the actor, for me at least, of relaxation because I felt so safe living inside of her brain. Like, she's got this, she's always, a hundred steps ahead of us. She knows what she's doing. She picked all these people to be here for a specific reason, for reasons that we don't even know what they are yet, but she's so ahead of it all. Um, and it's, it's a very exciting and uh, affirming and in, a, in, a, in an interesting way, relaxing state to be in because, you, because as a performer, you can really throw your hands up in the air and say, whatever you want. Tell me just where to go and how to say it, because there's just so much trust. Mm -hmm. And there's also lots of passion about the Matrix universe, and you are in the front line of this universe that has touched millions of people. What gave you the way that this wasn't a regular flick back when you read the first script in the late 90s, uh, Keanu? 
Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, meeting the filmmakers. And, you know, they had uh, a folio of artwork. They had the concept for a, a, a new kind of visual uh, shot for cinema, which eventually became called Bullet Time. Um, and the script, the story, the synthesis of ideas and concepts inside the Trojan horse of science fiction, of action, drama, of all this wonderful landscape of characters communicating philosophy and 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 what and right yeah and the struggle and a, a kind of tool set for us to take in and examine the world that we live in. What made me know it was going to be different was seeing the storyboards. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. storyboards, totally. I mean, I was talking to Key about this earlier. It's like a huge Japanese anime fan, and when I saw the storyboards, I was like, oh my goodness, this is live action Japanese anime. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is going to be re revolutionary if, the, if they can pull this off, and they did. And so that's what happened. Jonathan, how did your experience on stage help you on the set of The Matrix? Honestly, I've never rehearsed a play for as long as I trained for these fights. I mean, it was a multiple month preparation to get ready physically, mentally, learning what they even call the choreography of the fight. Um, and there was there was a part of it that made me feel very comfortable in that it is choreographed moves, but at the same time, it was a, it was a technique that I'd never done before, and it was the thing I was most excited about doing, jumping into this world and showing up on the first day of fight training and seeing Keanu in his like jujitsu suit, like popping things off with his feet. I was like, what? is happening right now. It was so surreal and it was so challenging and so rewarding to to execute those fights. Mm -hmm. Jada, uh, Naomi is a super brave and you are one hell of a courageous woman yourself. Does the process of becoming Naomi feel natural to you because of that? Or is it more of an exchange in which you landed uh, heard some of you and vice versa. Yes, there are aspects of Niobe that I relate to deeply. But in this particular movie, it's funny because there's a certain amount of maturity and, and she's grounded in a certain manner that Jada's just not there yet. But, and it's a different kind of strength that Niobe has to tap into uh, in this movie. Keanu, Neil is a larger-than-life character who has a lot we can talk about. So let's flip it sideways. Good old Thomas Anderson, how do you come about preparing for him this time? Read the script and, uh, <laughs> yeah, just kind of wanted to think about and spoke with Lana about what are some of the themes for the role and for the film, and then how could I play a lead be this kind of central character, but also be part of the chorus of it. How could I be this part of it that could integrate and reflect and also interact with all of the other characters in the film to, in a way to bring out their story. And so there was a kind of um, active listening for Thomas Anderson and Neo. At the same time, dealing with an internal struggle of how did I get here? Who am I? And how, how did what I thought we had achieved so much after revolutions to the situation that we find ourselves in resurrections? And, and to be older in it. And how does that, he's not a young man anymore. So I would say those are some kind of key points to, to the role. Out of the top of your heads, how many things about the Matrix Resurrections do you think are going to blow our minds as viewers? Just a number. It really depends on <laughs> yeah. which, where you're at. Yeah. It could be a little, it could, it could send you into utter confusion and <laughs> gobsmackedness. And I think this film is a real kind of, as the first trilogy was, this is a more, as a modern 
really modern kind of present day take on all of the technological influences that we have and constructs that we have and the way that we're mediating and interacting with them. So I think this film is actually very challenging. I think this film, the way that it holds up the mirror, absolutely. Um, who's beheld and how we're beheld. Yeah. <laughs> kind of uh <laughs> but uh but hopefully people will find it ins inspirational. Yeah. Well, we have to let you guys go, but I know you've been to Brazil. Can you tell us how did you like it and also invite our fans to watch The Matrix Resurrections? That's the thing. I've been trying to get to Brazil forever and I'm gonna make it there. That's what I am gonna do. <laughs> that's for sure. That's uh, cool. Yeah. yeah that's but I hear it's so beautiful. I can't wait to come and visit. Yeah, I mean, I had a great experience and hopefully, you know, Hello, Brazil! <laughs> and if you see the Matrix Resurrections, I, mean, I think we hope that you enjoy it yeah. and love it as much as we do. Absolutely. Congrats <laughs> to the lucky winner that's going to get this hot poster signed by the man himself. Hello. And, uh, and me. <laughs> yeah. Woman, person, Thank spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so let's sign. All right. Go over here. And, um, you had the coolest one. No, man, look at that. What no, are you talking about? this that's right like, here no, is that's dope. Old, that's, that's, that's fantastic. That's dope. Enjoy the film. The choice is yours. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. <laughs> Enjoy. And I'll put the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Thank you.